where it seems like there's all sorts of resolutions. Nothing provides the perfect way forward, but it seems like this is a very good compromise in terms of what you and the member nations and your colleagues came up with here. What are you most proud of about this new uh, qualification process that you presented today? Well, I think it gives uh, direct access to our members to the final round. Uh, I think when we had the previous format, it was done for the right reasons because uh, traditionally we had, you know, 29 nations watching six nations in a hex for two and a half years. Uh, but uh, which is why we came up with a previous uh, format. But this format now, I think, uh, is realistic to now. Uh, uh, we've lost almost a year of football. Uh, we're going to have a condensed calendar leading up to Qatar. We have other competitions like our Nations League Final Four, our Gold Cup, our Nations League 2.0, which now will start also in 22. So, you know, we're going to have a lot of football. So we wanted to, we didn't want to burden our member associations, both from a financial standpoint and even a sporting standpoint by going into what we called in the previous uh, version, sort of the sort of repechage or whatever that was. So this this gives it better balance. Um, it, it honors the five countries that were mathematically already over the line. Um, and so they'll be waiting in the final round, but it gives these 30 countries a shot at three spots in the final round. And um, you know, uh, like like in any competition, you have 30. Not all 30 are going to have a realistic chance at the three spots, but they all will play a guaranteed amount of gains, which is four. Some will play a few more. And then the ones that fancy themselves, um, uh, they're going to look at it and say, I got a real shot. In fact, I might be one of the – fancy myself as one of the favorites to be one of those three. Once you get in the final round, well, then we all know it doesn't matter what final round it is. Uh, it's going to be uh, a lot, you know, it's going to be 14 battles, right? How difficult was it coming up with this new process to really satiate, you know, the, um, and, and bring aboard every member nation to be as happy as possible with the outcome? Yeah, listen, it was, uh, it wasn't easy. Um, you know, you have to balance many, many things. You have to balance the sporting aspect. You also have to uh, balance the economics the realities of our region but also the economics of the ecosystem because many of the member associations, their only form of funding outside of FIFA CONCACAF is through their media rights deals that they have for World Cup qualifying. And if we would have compromised the system to a degree that would have compromised those contracts, you're talking about a significant amount of money for the majority of our members. And that wasn't, we felt, a smart thing to do, which is why we kept the sort of the final round as sort of almost like a league format where you're home and away against everybody. We just expanded it to give people more chances. Um, so all of this was taken into consideration, plus knowing that we had other competitions to try to squeeze in into one calendar. Uh, what's exciting for me is the worry, because we've lost almost a calendar year, Victor, with this global pandemic, that there was going to be fewer games. Now it seems like there's actually going to be more games. How difficult was it to chart out this potential path, at least on paper, what we're going to be experiencing here over the next two years? Well, there'll be more games in the World Cup qualifying format, but there'll be less in Gold Cup qualifying. So something always has to give. And so we have centralized the Gold Cup qualifying for the 12 teams that are still fighting for it. Canada is not one of them because they qualify directly through the Nations League. And to a centralized uh, knockout format a week before the Gold Cup. So it'll be a preliminary round on the Gold Cup. And um, so, you know, we've had to move our are, for instance, our League of Nations that would have started in November 21, now in May of 22. So there has been sacrifices made. If you just look at World Cup qualifying in isolation, yes, you're right. Uh, it, it's more matches uh, for some teams. Oh, actually, for all of them, even for the ones in the final round. But if you look at it as the entire ecosystem, you know, th there was some sacrifices that had to be made. But I, I think even though sacrifices were done, not only for the right reasons, but I think it's improved. Uh, the product, like for instance, Gold Cup qualifying. And now that we have a centralized knockout format at the Gold Cup a week before the group stage, I think that adds excitement to the tournament. Uh, the organization of it, everything looks like it's going to check out. We never know what's going to happen in terms of the health and safety and the conditions around the region. Uh, is there contingency plans in case in case anything may come up and you may have yeah. to alter this current format on the fly? Yeah. Yeah, listen, first of all, there's going to have to be health protocol. Not a match could be kicked off unless we're in the right state of mind or frame of mind in the right uh, state in terms of our medical protocols. 
But also if, for instance, uh, you know, October or November uh, get compromised because like June and September were, uh, we do have um, uh, contingency plans to replace those FIFA windows in 2021 and or even early 2022. Um, so there is contingency plans uh, for the upcoming windows. Beyond that, we haven't, you know, FIFA nor the other confederations have thought beyond 2020 in terms of losing any more dates, uh, because we would hope that we would have a solution uh, to either deal with the situation or uh, obviously the world has come up with a medical solution. So, but there is a contingency plan for the short and medium term. Um, I think a lot of people are familiar with travel contingencies and and, uh, and and things that are put into place like quarantining. Have you been in conversation with the member nations to see what that would mean for players traveling in and out of countries for these qualifiers? Yeah, I mean, these are all part of the protocols. And obviously, for instance, uh, you know, if you've got a quarantine for 14 days, I'm not sure how realistic it is to run a World Cup qualifying format. But, you know, we're talking about October here and we don't know what it's going to be like in October. Um, and as we saw from Europe, things can change quickly. Yeah. Uh, if you would have told, if you would have told me that, you know, and I was in Europe in February, and March, you would have told me, uh, that, uh, you know, the Bundesliga, the English league, Serie A would have finished their, their seasons. And we're got, about to start watching uh, champions league football in a week. Uh, you would have told me that in March or even April, maybe even May, I would have went, really? Um, and but you know what? Uh, as you can see, when you properly plan it, when you properly do it, you can pull it off. So, but having said that, if we need to change things, uh, we will. And um, and but for now, I think uh, it's good that we have a format, we have a plan, we have some structure, so that our member associations can start planning. Uh, and I'm assuming that fans in the stands—that's part of that process. We're in a wait and see position with that as of right now as well. Victor. Yeah, and that's a that's a domestic decision by every country. Right. So uh, you know, obviously, the Canadian health authorities will make that decision uh, in terms of uh, would we, you know, you might be able to play games, but maybe you can't have fans in the stands. Well, that's a domestic decision. So each jurisdiction will be uh, will be making that decision. So who knows where we'll be in October um, or November. So correct me if I'm wrong, Canada will be in group B in terms of the six groups that will initially play and they'll go on and play the winner of a uh, of group. What would it be? E uh, potentially coming out of that. Was that just based upon FIFA rankings and is it that rigid in the draw that will take place on August 14th? will kind of unveil the rest of the teams that Canada, and these other nations will play in the first round of competition. Yeah, we thought it was fair to, uh, to, to obviously have the, the teams that are ranked. Uh, you know, one to five have gone in the final round. Six to 11 will be the heads of the group. Uh, the rest will be put in pots uh, and then drawn out. So you really don't know who you're playing in your group. And then uh, and I thought it, we, we thought it was important, even from the member associations, that we they knew from a, from a – because a draw will happen in mid-August. And everything will be drawn, which is why it has to be preset. So all the matches for October, November, uh, the matches for March of the group winners, and even the schedule for the final round of eight will be drawn. Uh, mathematically, all- sorry, go ahead, Victor. Sorry to cut you off. I was just going to say, uh, like, mathematically, it all works out. And that's why I'm assuming those five uh, nations, in terms of leading the way in terms of the FIFA rankings, they get the automatic berth to the octagon. Simply put, the numbers work out six groups of five equals 30. Is that, was yeah, that yeah. kind of the, the thought process behind that? No, because uh, I think we, you kind of, uh, it's reverse engineering. If the principle is that those five, they, the principle was that those five were mathematically, if it wasn't five and it was four, or if it was six, it would have changed the math. And we would have to figure out a format for 31 or 29 or whatever the number would have been. It just happened to be, it was five that were mathematically in. So that means you have 30 left. So we got to figure out a format to get from 30 to three in three rounds. And this is what we have. This is such an incredibly important time for Canadian football, but any team that's involved in the octagon, Victor, I mean, what an opportunity to play not just the top five, but the top seven other nations within your region. There has to be a lot of excitement from the member nations about the potential of getting in that octagon and having so many big games come in such a short period of time. Yeah, and if you've seen if you've seen the results in our last in our first edition of the Nations League and also our last two Gold Cups, 
with countries that some people may, may have never even heard of, um, like Curaçao, um, like Montserrat in the Nations League, like Bermuda. Um, you know, you've seen these results, Guyana, who, you know, qualified for the last Gold Cup. You know, when you give people opportunities, uh, it's amazing what happens. And, and so we've been giving these countries an opportunity. And this is just another step along that journey. We're giving these countries more opportunities, even World Cup qualifying. Uh, I think we're going to have some surprises along the way. Right. And that's what I was going to mention, whether it's Canada or these other nations that are kind of involved in the opening round. I mean, you expect them to get through, but there's all kinds of drama that can play out in the home and away just to get to the octagon. What's been the response of, of not only the Canadian Soccer Association, but all the other ones that are right in the mix there? Yeah, no, it's been very positive because now they see that they have a real opportunity to get into the final eight. Uh, they also see that if even if they don't get in the final eight, they get to play uh, some games to prepare for maybe what their goal is for the next few years, which might be only to qualify. Everybody's kind of at a different point of their development. Some want to get promoted in the next League of Nations. Some want to get to the Gold Cup. Uh, and so they see that this is part of their journey that we might not realistically get to the final eight, but if we could play, you know, four World Cup qualifying games, which just cheers Gold Cup qualifiers, it prepares us. So it's all, you know, everybody's at a different level of preparation. Obviously, a country like Canada uh, or any of the six that are heading the, the groups of five, they should be fancying themselves as the ones getting, you know, one of the three spots, right? Let's end on this, Victor. I mean, this is a region now with undisputed world-class talent within it, whether you are an Alfonso Davies in Canada, you know, Jimenez in Mexico, Pulisic in the United States, like each and every one of these countries seemingly has a superstar. I just wonder that through this difficult time, we're going to come out to basically a two-year sprint for your federation and finding ways to capitalize, whether it's from a television audience or another perspective. Like, how excited are you the fact that these games are going to come fast and furious and there's such an opportunity to showcase the talent and the ability that's going on in this region today? No, listen, I think it's going to be, you know, and the great thing about for our region is, you know, we're going to come out of the blocks here uh, once we get the green light uh, from uh, our medical authorities. We're going to come out of the block, and it's going to be a bit of a sprint uh, to the end of 22 with World Cup qualifying, Gold Cup, Nations League, and then obviously the World Cup itself at the end of 22. And then, you know, as soon as the calendar turns to 23, then it's another sprint to our, uh, us hosting the World Cup. So it's going to be a, a Formula One race uh, for this region between now and I would say 2026 uh, in terms of football, which you know, I'm not sure the last time a CONCACAF president could say that when it was yeah, no. when it had a plethora of football and a plethora of talent that you just named in terms of and there's more, obviously, um, that um, we've had. So I think it's a great uh, this is a great time for a, a um, you know, for CONCACAF in terms of, you know, where we've been and where we're going. And uh, I think uh, this, today's another example of that. Well, I can only speak on behalf of Canadian soccer supporters. It seems like the response has been overwhelmingly positive. I'm sure that your email, your text, your WhatsApp groups have been filled with, with messages today, not only from Canadian fans, but fans in Curaçao and Panama and Haiti and TNT as these countries have a new lease of life in this competition. Um, it was hard work putting this together, but more hard work is in your not-so-distant future. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you for taking some time today, Mr. President. Thanks, Gareth. Take care. Victor Mintagliani joining us here on One Soccer. And a reminder, we are your home for World Cup qualifying in the CONCACAF region for the World Cup 2022 in, Qat in Qatar, as well next summer, the 2021 Gold Cup. You can watch right here on One Soccer.